Hi class, this is Jordan Armstrong. Um, today we'll be doing unit one discussion. Uh, so yeah, my article was published May 15th, 2020 by Deborah Fisher. Um, the headline is Memphis Journalist First Amendment False First Amendment Lawsuit After Removal from City's Media Advisory List. So this advisory list allowed different journalists, whether it was independent or a group, um, to have access to different data in the city um, pertaining to the city of Memphis, um, kind of like a local outlet uh, to just keep all the journalists up to date and to know what's going on. Um, that access was terminated and taken away from her um, due to her being viewed as non-objective. Um, in 2017, uh, the uh, chief communications officer, which her name is Ursula Madden, uh, she uh, informed uh, Ms. Thomas verbally, I mean verbatim, she said, demonstrated particularly on social media that you are not objective when it comes to Mayor Jim Strickland. So um, throughout this article, they talked about how, you know, they felt that she um, she didn't speak about Jim Strickland in the best light. They felt that you know, she wasn't seeing him as this, you know, superhero that they wanted her to see. Um, but again, you know, whatever she speaks out on social media goes back to how this pertains to our unit is um, First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of press. Um, and uh, that starts on page uh, 47 for us. Uh, it says the First Amendment speech in press freedoms in theory and reality. And at the uh, bottom of the page, it kind of just talks about the First Amendment and kind of elaborates on it. Um, but this is something that is a key factor um, throughout life. But in this, I mean, for journalists, it's very important. Um, and many journalists have been attacked and their rights have been attacked. Their, um, you know, First Amendment rights have tried to be um, attacked due to just different situations. Um, so, all right. So we talked about what it is. We talked about how it pertains to the unit um, being the First Amendment. And she, again, she said that she felt that um, her First Amendment was violated. Uh, she gave provided us with five ways. I'll uh, list a few. Um, it says, uh, disrupting her ability to gather and report the news, restricting her rights to access information in city government, making an unconstitutional content-based and or viewpoint-based decision to exclude her. And again, uh, it's a total of five, but I just gave you, you know, just a few to understand, like, she had a whole layout. Well, not an entire layout, but she had five valid points um, as to where her First Amendment was attacked. Um, so uh, the results of this, um, they said they never gave her or anybody on that advisory list a warning that if you didn't have this ideology or if you weren't viewed as objective, that you would lose access to this information. And this affected her job greatly. I mean, she couldn't report different stories during COVID. It was very hard for her because that was her primary database that she was using and she lost all access to that. So it, it, it caused... Um, a huge problem, a huge, huge problem. Um, so, um, okay, yeah, so we said that, okay, so the, yeah, so the result was they, uh, the courts agreed that she was not given, um, there was no layout saying, hey, these are the boundaries when you're on this list, she can't do this, this, and that, um, or you will lose access. So they felt that it was unfair that there was no, no disclosure. Um, it was just a sudden um, decision. It was a sudden decision. Um, and it could be viewed as discrimination. Um, because again, there was no valid reason. I mean, that's what makes politics politics. And, you know, just news, news, there's different people have different ide ideologies and standpoints. And that's what makes it so great. So I mean, I personally agree with the outcome. And if I was, um, Miss Thomas, I myself would have um, argued that my First Amendment rights were violated because they were. She spoke how she wanted to on her platform because that was her platform. That was a represent representation of her and she felt that she could speak that way. Um, I felt that nothing that she shared was um, inappropriate. It was just truthful. And again, it just didn't align with other people's viewpoints who had an issue with it. Um, so again, I feel that... Um, I would have escalated and if I was ever put in that situation that yes, I, w I know my rights and I'm going to make sure that they know that. 
Um, so I hope this kind of gave you out an insight on um, the case and how this whole thing worked out for her. Um, but this is a true reflection of the First Amendment in Chapter 2.